So how are we going to be defining the truthness of this table? Well, again, let's start by recalling. Let's recall that conjunction statements using the word and, and again, the symbol for it is when we have the open arrow. It is only true when both statements are true. And for a disjunction, which we use the word or, and the symbol is the lower arrow, it is true if only one statement is true. So let's use these ideas and let's see how we can define them within this example. So we're going to start the same way. Let's take a look at the column from P and Q and just list the different combinations. Both of them true, both of them false, first one true, second one false, first one false, second one true. Now, let's pause and let's look at the symbol. Notice that in here, we are using the conjunction statement. This is an AND statement. So therefore, it's only going to be true when both of the statements are true. So, within this row, Notice that both statements are true, therefore, my conjunction is going to be true. If I take a look at this row, both of my, both of my statements are false, so therefore, the conjunction is going to be false. And the third statement in here, notice that only one statement is true. But again, we're looking at the conjunction statement, and we are saying that it's only true when both of them are true. Here, only one word is true. So therefore, this is false. And lastly, notice that only one statement is true. So therefore, this is false. So this is why it's important to kind of understand both of those rules. Now, let's take a look at the next column. We always want to go one column at a time. So let's just erase this. How are we going to do this? Well, let's understand the symbol. This whole statement that we have here, perhaps I need to make this a little bit more clear, that's for P. This whole statement, we are negating. We are negating the conjunction statement. So for that, we're going to be looking at the conjunction statement. And we're going to negate it. So how are we going to do this? Here. My conjunction statement is true, so therefore the negation is false. Let's go to the next column. Here, my conjunction statement is false, so therefore my negation is true. Here, my conjunction is false, so therefore my negation is true. And here, my conjunction is false, so therefore my next statement it's true. Let's take a look at the last statement, a little more complex than that. Same idea. We always start the same way. List all the different combinations. Both of them are true. Both of them are false. First one true, second one false, false and true. Let's take a look at one statement at a time or one column. So here we have it. We are negating P. So let's take a look at P. P within this statement, it is true, so therefore the negation, it is false. Here P is false, so therefore my negation is true. Here P is true, so therefore my negation, it's false. Here P is false, so therefore my negation, it's true. All right. So again, notice that I'm doing this one column at a time. Now let's take a look at the next column. We are negating Q. So let's take a look at Q. Here, Q in this column or in this row, it was true, so therefore it is false. Here, Q 
it is false, so therefore the negation is true. Here, Q is false, so therefore my negation is true. Here, Q is true, so therefore my negation is false. So again, I'm looking at one column at a time. Now, let's look at this last statement that we have here. This is a is a big statement. So let's see how can we think of a strategy to fill that in. Well, the first thing to notice is that here, this is a conjunction. Because look at the symbol. We're looking at the open arrow. Now, what are we conjunction? We are conjunction not Q, I'm sorry, not P and not Q. So I'm only going to concentrate on the rows for not p and not q so if you want to think about it i'm not even going to take a look at the first two columns that we have here i'm only going to concentrate on the third and fourth column and i want to see what rules can be applied here so with within my this row here i can see that my statement is false and false both statements are false so therefore the conjunction it is false Let's go to the next statement. True and true. Both statements are true. Therefore, the conjunction is true. Because remember, on the conjunction, both of the statements need to be true in order for the conjunction to be true. Then my next row, only one of them is true. So therefore, the conjunction is false. And within the last row, only one statement is true. So therefore, the conjunction is false. So notice that it's very easy for us to kind of get confused by looking at all these F's and all these T's. But there's always some order behind them. So let's summarize this. Now, initially, we said, look, a, any conjunction statement, a conjunction statement will only be true if both of the statements are true. And then we take a look at the disjunction statement. And we said on the disjunction, only one of the statements need to be true for the disjunction statement to be true. And lastly, the negation, we're looking at a statement and we write it the opposite. If it's true, then the negation, it's false and vice versa. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.